to step into this doorway of heaven and talk to Moses and Elijah. The disciples needed him to do it. They needed to see that. They needed to understand their relationship with God and heaven and Jesus' relationship with the faithful who had served God in heaven. And they got to see that. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Likewise, God did not need to see Isaac sacrificed. It was Abraham who needed to understand what true sacrifice is. And it's we who need to know that it was, of course, foreshadowing for the true sacrifice of the Son of God. Faith is what links these two readings. The faith of the apostles, and think about it. The Jerusalem metro area, a little over a million people at that time. Rochester metro area, around a little over a million people. And how many were close disciples of Jesus? A dozen guys and the ladies along with them. That's a pretty small number out of a million plus, isn't it? Yet they had a deep enough faith to go where Jesus went, to do what Jesus did, and to do it pretty much blindly because they knew he is the son of God. They had that faith. Faith, belief without proof. Likewise, Abraham. Faith, belief without proof. But he was tested and understood the power and promise of God as it related to faith. This is all about faith, faith, faith. Do we have faith? Faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. We know that. However, do we own our faith? Do we own our own faith individually? Otherwise, when we come here, all we're saying is, you know, my parents love God and love their neighbor. Or we can point to someone else here and say, you know, that person here loved God and loves their neighbor. And I like hanging out with them because they're good people. And that's true. I love hanging out with you because you're good people. I love being here. But unless we own that faith, we can't really truly be in love with God. And we can come to that faith through our parents. Don't get me wrong. Or we can come to that, that, that love of God through our parents. We can come to that love of God by ourselves. And different traditions in this world do it differently. I'm, I'm reminded of my, our Thanksgiving table and Christmas table was like United Nations. We always had doctors. My mom's a nurse. And we always had doctors from all around the world, literally. And one Thanksgiving, Dr. Chala was there early and I was talking with him and he, he went over his shoulder and said, oh, by the way, I won't be here for Christmas. I'm going home to get married. And mom and dad smiled and congratulated him. And I said, well, how long have you known her? He was going back to India to get married and he said, oh, I've never met her. What? How can you marry somebody you don't even know? And his answer was profound to me. He said, well, we have a different culture and custom in India. Here, you choose to marry the person you love. In India, we choose to love the person we marry. Love is a choice. And we can choose to love God by ourselves or through our parents. It doesn't matter. It was Dr. Chala's parents that found the love of his life for him, Ranjana. And likewise, we, from our parents sometimes, are given that love. And that's a beautiful thing. But there are those of us 
who even after 16 years of Catholic schools might need to say, why am I Catholic? Because mom and dad said I'm Catholic. And we need to own it for ourselves. We need to look around. We need to understand different faith approaches. And we need to understand the beauty of this particular church and the beautiful people that are part of it. We have to own it. We have to have a faith that brings us to a wonderful love of God. I love this quote from St. Augustine. To fall in love with God is the greatest of romances. To seek him, the greatest adventure. To find him, the greatest human achievement. To fall in love with God is the greatest of romances. To seek him, the greatest adventure. To find him, the greatest human achievement. We're at the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we really understand our faith, we have found God. We have found what God calls us to do. Yes, it changes every day because God puts different people in front of us to love. But we've learned to love unconditionally. We have that faith, that mustard seed, and it's been planted and it's growing. And it changes every day, just as a plant changes every day. But each of us have to own that faith. We have to understand how it needs to grow in us. Right? And let that romance grow. Give God a hug all the time. I use the word hugs. Not all families are huggy. Okay, I get it. My wife's family is huggy. I learned to hug there. My dad's family, the hug was the molasses cookie his grandma always had for us. My mom's family, the time my grandma spent with us individually, taught us how to cook. Hugs come in different forms. And our hugs for God, thank you for coming to give God a hug tonight. Our hugs for God come in a different form all the time. So yes, build your romance with God, love God, give God a hug, however you wanna do that. Stations of the cross, give God a hug. On Fridays, come and give God a hug. Be in love with God. Build the romance. And go on that adventure every day. Amen? Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The psalmist tells us that faithful servants call upon the name of the Lord. Let us do so, confident that the Lord will hear us. Our response is, God of mercy, hear our prayer. For church leaders throughout the world, may they know God's mercy and strength, especially in times of failure and deep disappointment. We pray to the Lord. God, God of mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For a renewal of efforts at reconciliation, may the world's leaders learn to break down barriers that divide. We pray to the Lord. God, God of mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayer. For those who suffer persecution and endure violence for the profession of their Christian faith, that these sisters and brothers be found true and faithful witnesses in bearing their cross and may peace reign in their world. 
we pray to the Lord. God, have God mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. For Catholic Charities Family and Community Services, this weekend's parish sharing recipient, we pray to the Lord. God, God have mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially all who are in our hospitals, hospice, and nursing homes, all afflicted with illness, all who cannot be with us today, and all who are written in our Book of Intentions, may they know healing and transformation. We pray to the Lord. God, God we hear our prayer. Our prayer. For those who have died, especially Ursula Martin, Pamela Oliveri, Larry Nichols, and Raymond Farnand, and Beverly Heberger, who recently passed away. May they be surrounded by the saints in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, mercy, hear our prayer. God of faithful love, hear the prayer of your people, gather to celebrate this memorial of your everlasting covenant. Keep us always close to you, and when we fail, call us back to your redeeming love. We ask this through your Son, who transformed the transformed one, who is Lord forever and ever. Our offertory hymn is number 850, 850. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice under hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and well his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, and without end, we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to become heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord. The body of Christ. For those who are worshiping with us online, we offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Blessing for healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed and be set free from every illness, from every part of darkness, from every conflicts and problems in your life. I rebuke every evil over you, and I claim in God's name all healing, blessings, and deliverance, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join us in our closing hymn, number 390, 390.